So, hey everyone, welcome to our fifth episode of Rain Talks. Uh, I'm Matthew, here with the co-host Aishu. Uh, we're going to talk with Dr. Greg Mack, a nutritionist, chiropractor, and funder of Found the Cure. And we have a short intro video, and then we're going to get into a little bit lengthier introduction. Hey everybody, glad to be here. Looking forward to that video. All right. I should hear your sound up. All right. Well, that was the video. So introductions. Thanks, Ashu. Yeah. So I'm Dr. Greg. I've played a lot of soccer in my life. Uh, so it was this big part of figuring out who I am. And when I was actually on the field, I was about 14. And I thought I was having a heart attack. I just like keeled over. I couldn't breathe. I just had severe pain in my chest, of course, like right near my heart. And it was like, I was so scared. I didn't tell nobody about it, right? I was just petrified about death and you know it kind of got me figuring out like how do i how do i stay at the top of my game and you know nutrition was my answer for that that's the way i knew how because you know i got some history i've had diabetes since i was like two years old so i got some character in my metabolism realm which is just all about it right so i figured out that that was had to do with minerals Severe pain in the chest was often, from the old research, had to do with minerals. And it also had to do with just certain food factors that was going to be better for my system. So that's what you do. You just kind of step in the ways that make sense to you. And just like when we're on the pitch, right, we got to do our fundamentals. And that was like the best part about soccer is just doing 3v1s, right? 3v1s forever. That's like what you need. And we're going to try to find correlates in the nutritional world to what you need to just live your best life today. And thanks, Ayusha, for being here. And Matthew, thank you for this opportunity. And Alex Kroka, like, how do y'all know Alex? I'm just curious. So um, I went to, like, a, a tryout for a local league. All right. He was one of the, the captains I was scouting for his team there. So we played together for, for a season. Um, and I actually – didn't get to finish the season because I had a, a tear in my calf muscle. So I missed like the last five games, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we brought him on as a coach um, to help out with our, our U-17s. Um, and then that, that led us to you. <laughs> That's awesome. Shoot, yeah, Alex and, I, Alex and I actually coached a team when we were in high school. It was a, it was a U-8 team. It was mm -hmm. like, Oh man, I had such high hopes for everything. I was like, I'm going to do ball passes and everything. We're going to do fundamentals. We're going to be training. And it was really just like, all right, you got to run to that post and come back. <laughs> that's the only thing I can get you to do as a team. But yeah. it was a humbling experience, to say the least. Yeah, you ate it. It's tough. It was. But shoot, you know, it was good times. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's get into it then. So, first fundamental thing we got to talk about is mineral just on a global level minerals require about two-thirds of our nutritional needs now we need minerals because they are they activate something called enzymes in our system and they're necessary for muscles like calcium they need mineral calcium to do work and that's to make contraction and release contraction so i don't know if you all have ever experienced like muscle cramps after a match right i know i have shoot i scared the heck out of me first cramp i had it was like a double quad cramp. I thought I was just dying again. Wasn't the case, but we need calcium to help our muscles. And an easy way to get all these minerals or most all of them is salt. And you know, that's just a fundamental thing. Now salt's like, well, it's got a bit of history. It's part of this natural world. We've been having salt forever. It tastes delicious on food and we need it to survive. Um, you know, it's actually good for those calf muscles, too, there, Matthew. It tends to be, in general. Um, but you, who's ever heard of somebody named Ivan Pavlov? Anyone? 
He was the guy who like ring a bell and then dogs would yeah. salivate. Yep. Now he yep. did some really other cool research that had to do with salt. Okay. And he was studying dogs and he understood that dogs could live forever if they had adequate amounts of salt, even after he took out some of their glands, which was like, oh. sounds horrific. Yeah. But he would take out the adrenal gland and that's our fight or flight burn gland, right? Mm -hmm. That's our cortisol gland, that's our epinephrine gland. And that really activates our system. And he would just cut that out of the dog. I'm sorry, I know it's bad, but like <laughs> the dogs would live indefinitely if they had access to adequate salt, which was just kind of cool because we need salt to, to build a lot of stuff in our system. I know that's pretty shocking. I'm sorry. I know that's like a harsh reality. No, oh, that's a gross one. I don't have to see that in your head. But salt is necessary for life. That's all. Uh, we need it to make stomach acid. We need it to sweat. If we don't have salt, our sweat glands don't work. So if we're out in the heat, we need salty water. That's all. Now, a simple way to go about doing that is to get yourself a gallon jug of water and put in two tablespoons of salt. And then you just made your own natural Gatorade that way. It's super cheap. It's chock full of electrolytes, made by nature. And huh. you'll actually really like it probably. I know I have, I, I crave it now. I just like start on it. I feel better after a workout. I don't get that afternoon dip in energy. Right. It's like my coffee, Matthew. It literally is my coffee now. Salt water, which sounds crazy, but it's like, it's so simple. We gotta try simple things first. I think that's my favorite. That's yeah. what my call to action is. Let's try the simple things made by nature first and foremost. Right. So on, on the, on the Gatorade bit, um, a lot of sport drinks have, I feel like more sugar in them mm -hmm. and, and it, the, the sugar kind of overbalances the salt, even though the science that you just explained seems so, so basic. Um, why, why are these sports drinks putting so much sugar into them? Well, sugar it tastes sweet. That's why it's delicious. Come on, I know. We all know it's so good. Now, now here's what. Those Gatorades, they, they work. They work well. Um, mainly after extensive workouts, they do replenish us because that, that glucose mm -hmm. is a very easy conversion to make something called glycogen. And glycogen is our, is our liver fuel. It's like our reserve fuel. It's kind of like that fifth gear fuel if you're playing sports and you know you can make the run, but you just dig deep and you make it. That's usually glycogen breaking down into quick service of fuel. And Gatorade replenishes that after workout. It does. But there's other ways to go about it, you know? There are just other ways. So what we're going to be talking about is how we replenish after a match. And for me and a lot of top athletes, it's like you want to eat some protein. You do. It's just close to source. You want to get some rare protein because it's providing you with fat soluble vitamins. It's providing you with raw amino acid precursors. And, you know, all those are building block materials. But we'll kind of get into that in a little bit later. So, yeah. Now, let's talk about, let's talk about Phil Maffetone. He's an endurance physiologist for a top athletic performance. And Really, really smart guy, just break down the science and we're gonna simplify all that, but he understood that there's two main physiologies that we live in. And that is we have aerobic system, that would be just oxygen. You know, that's where we live most of our life. And then we have the anaerobic system. And that just means an, meaning without oxygen. And that would be that fifth year that we all know we kind of have, that dig deep and make the push. And you know, what we gotta do to maximize both those systems is to build our aerobic capacity. You know, like a lot of times people just get really vigorous really quickly and then they get extremely sweaty and they kind of just trough out, right? They burn a little bit. And that's difficult for top endurance athletes and extending our ability to play and that touch and all the grace we try to harness on that soccer pitch. Yeah. We do better if we have aerobic capacity as our friend. Like, I like to think about it like uh, you got like a big arch, right? And here's your aerobic capacity is all here. And then on the outside of the arch is the anaerobic capacity. So we need to go gradation of like the step here is to build your aerobics. And then that inherently builds your anaerobic potential as well. So we get better endurance with aerobic fitness. 
So I'm just curious, like, how often are y'all sweating? I know you're sweating when you're at practice and when you're sweating at the matches, for sure. But even on your off days, it's really nice to get some aerobic and push it a little bit. We did just launch a poll that asked that question. How many days per week do you complete an anaerobic exercise that makes you sweat? And this is when you get sweaty, and that's good. We need to push that. So, oh, good, good, good. All right. Now, it's just gradations, just like we work on our touch, just like we work on our fall pass, fundamental skills. Aerobics are where we live most of our life. So I love high intensity workouts. They're exciting, they get me jammed, right? It's super fun. It's exhausting in a great way. But we need to balance that with aerobic fitness because that's how we get that six, you know, the 95th minute stuff is all based on aerobic potential. And one of the simple ways to go ahead and do that is like, you get sweaty when you're at practice, do that, that's fantastic. But aerobic work out of practice, outside of practice, is going to be like doing some motion that gets you right until you begin to sweat. You want to slowly ramp up. You're doing jogging. You're just doing walking. You're just doing stairs. But you want to sustain the burn until you get to the super sweaty spot. Because when you get to super sweaty right away, that means you shifted the anaerobic, and then you're pushing that potential, which is great. We need to do that. But let's just build slowly just like a match, right? Just like a proper warm up, just like proper cool down. You go, 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 go. And then when you start to sweat, you do the cool down. So it's kind of a subtle thing, but it's just, it works in a good way for long-term endurance. Yeah. You'll map a tone. Sorry, Matthew, go on. No, I was, just, I was agreeing. And, and um, so we, we have a, our fitness coach at, and we've been doing the, the, the Zoom workouts. Mm -hmm. um, it always starts with a stretch and then it goes straight into like a, a light jog. It's just three, three steps forward, three steps back, and it gradually builds you up. And then maybe you're sweating for maybe 15 minutes at a maximum. And then it starts to come down. And then as you bring your heart rate down, then you go into another stretch uh, and that takes you to the end. So, you, you know, we're, we're hitting all of those things within one like hour long intensity workout. I like that. And I like how that ramps like that. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we need that kind of, that's what we do on the pitch. We're not running nonstop, but we got to kind of raise and fall, raise and fall. Yeah. It's all about so that, that sounds awesome, Matthew. And reaching out to folks at the Zoom is like, it's a cool way. This is brand new. So now Phil Maftome is good for that optimizing motion. All right. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like how we move in life. Right. But you know, there's other work that we can do to just optimize how we fuel ourselves. And now I'd like to tell you about a website. It's called www.ptoer. That just means protein to energy ratio.com. And this is fantastic work by Dr. Ted Naiman. And he's talking about global work just as a culture in America, we tend to deal with obesity. You know, it's just a big thing for our culture. And he understands that when we have our protein levels met in a dietary stand, we're no longer hungry. So that's the rate limiting factor for people. Now he understood that hunter gatherer culture had about 33% of their diet was protein. Now that's pretty awesome. If you check out that PTOER ratio, you can kind of play with it and play with the calculator. But typically in America, we're eating about 11% of our diet is good protein, usable protein. Now that's tough because we're eating more and more and more trying to fill our protein needs, but we're just not having enough. So we just keep eating more of the same food that we're eating, which is like mostly the American diet, which is crisp, carved, sugared, everything. So he understands that when we shift into more protein foods after meals, before games, all these factors, we optimize our nutritional energy instead of having that up and down cycles. And we just, are no longer hungry and that's good because you know eating a lot of food takes a lot of energy too and protein tastes delicious right who doesn't want a steak after a soccer pitch right at least i do i don't know <laughs> now other ways you can get around it raw mushrooms are chock full of protein it's like they're pure protein that's pretty awesome sardines those are not very tasty they're probably great for social distancing but 
they are good for you, very good for you, you know? Um, there's a great thing called omega-3 fatty acids. Uh -huh. And those are great because they reduce inflammation. And those are all found in all sorts of fish and seafood. So, you know, what we want to do is just optimize our own choices. Because, you know, sometimes when we just have empty calories, they, they cost us twice. You know, once we actually purchase them and once when we, you know, just eat an empty food. Right. And those would be the things that are usually really advertised. Yeah. You know, this is not as, you know, if they can have a whole advertising campaign, probably not the best thing for you, you know? Yeah. I've Nature speaks. A lot of those, the, especially the ones that do the advertising and, and the chips and all are more, more to engage the, the mind mm -hmm. because they are empty calories, but they fill that, that eating uh, action. Like I'm picking something up, I'm chewing it, something is going down to my stomach. It's not helping me at all. Uh, but now I'm not going to be hungry for maybe 20 minutes, but then I'll have to get another bag and do the same thing. So it's, it's more mental and it's very difficult to, to break those types of um, brainwashing. You know, you said it right there, Matthew, it is very mental. And you know, those people, they know exactly what humans want to eat based on flavors, based on calories, based on fatty food. And they just mix it all together in a little focus group cocktail of like, oh, that's going to get them hooked. And that's tough because it's like, it's everywhere. Yeah. You know, it's literally, it's everywhere. Like if you go to the grocery store, what do you eat, right? That's kind of like, it was, it was a tough thing for me because I felt like, oh, I was, I was afraid of food. I don't want anyone to be afraid of food, but I just want people to know what is the best part about foods that are going to get them long-term well-being. Like, just imagine, <clears throat> well, here's what. Imagine you got like a hundred soccer players, right? Mm -hmm. And what if out of those soccer players, one out of every two male soccer players had a circulatory disease or they had a heart attack, you know, or a heart disease. One out of two. What if, you know, one third of those people were so riddled with arthritis they couldn't move around on the pitch at all. That would be, it'd be difficult to have a soccer match with these players, you know? And that's not a, a soccer team I know, but that's the whole stats of America right now. You know, we're trending towards de degenerative diseases. Instead of living well, we're just breaking down faster. And so how do we not break down faster? That's my whole gig. Yeah. And one is we get salty. And two is we, we start eating foods that are close to source. Like, you know, vitamin A is one of my favorite vitamins. And, you know, it's, it's hard to come by. It's only in animal foods. And vitamin A is great for endurance, actually. So it keeps you going long term. And there was a cool study in South Africa. They did this on training cyclists which are just, you know, running on those treads, right? Mm -hmm. And they're going, going, going. And the, the high carbohydrate diet group was, it was about, they burned out half as fast as the low carbohydrate diet group. So they had one group that had 73% carbohydrates in their lifestyle. Another group had 7% carbohydrates. So that means one group had a lot of cookies and one group had no cookies, right? The no cookie group actually went twice as long on the pitch on their work with endurance because they have adequate vitamin A levels, which is kind of cool. Now, where do you get vitamin A? It's, it's, in, it's in leafy greens, but it's also, you know, it's in livers. I know, right? No one's going to eat any liver. I don't expect you to, but it's kind of cool. That's where the body concentrates it. Um, so a good way to do that would be to, you know, it's also in fish. It's in fish oil. So again, we're just getting to made by nature. It's better for us. Okay. And yeah, it's cool thing about that though, is like, you know, these, these things that I really love are called fat soluble vitamins, meaning that they're in fat. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the best source of fat we have around that tastes delicious? Butter. Butter is like the holy grail of these fat soluble vitamins. It has everything. It has vitamin D, has vitamin A, vitamin E, and vitamin K, and vitamin F, which is just a term for essential fatty acid. And that's just it, essential fatty acid. A lot of these foods I'm talking about, you know, they are essential to life. Uh, there's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate, which is tough because those are the most prevalent. But 
you know, I think we were creating space on this classroom earth, right? We can eat like kings and queens, or we can eat, you know, what we've been told to eat. Yeah. But we're changing the story a little bit. So if we fill up on the good stuff, your life changes. That's all there is to it. Yeah. So let's see. Now my favorite vitamin E is your muscle recovery vitamin. All right. That's going to be actually muscle builder vitamin too. Because who knows when you work out hard, right? You actually tear the muscle fiber and then it heals the next night, right? So you break down, heal, break down, heal, break down, heal. And that's kind of how muscles develop and grow. And that's how we all do. It's like that whole analogy of the lobster shell. We need that little bit of stress to then do better, do more in life. And that's it. We just want to have good stress. But we need that vitamin E to build muscles. That's where it's stored. And so if you eat foods that are muscle meat, like protein, like a steak, like chicken, like beef, you know, all those things all have all the things that you need. That's what you are. Like we're flesh on the inside too. So that's kind of old premise, but like begets like, you know, if you eat those foods that are close to source, close to what you need, it's just easier for your conversion into living the best life. So yeah, I'll just keep talking about steak forever probably, but cause it's just so good. And butter. Uh, just today, I got eight pounds of butter shipped it to me, and it's just so delicious. I just love it. That's a lot of butter. <laughs> it is a lot of butter, but shoot, why not, right? Yeah. What are so, you planning to do with all the butter? You know, honestly, I put it on top of my steak. <laughs> 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 and I just, yeah, that's it. Keep it there. It's good to have. I give it away as gifts, too. It's just a nice conversation, but... Yeah. It's seriously, if you're giving away all the fat soluble vitamins, that's uh -huh. just like, that's the gift that keeps giving in my book. And yeah. that's how tomorrow could look. You know, you can have eggs for breakfast. Uh, you can have a little crisp salad for lunch. You know, I love fresh things. I love fresh and green things as well. Because those are also just very close to source. Close mm -hmm. to source foods are, you know, closer to nature. Closer to nature means closer to the rhythm I want in my life. You know, there's, I just don't think we do very good with chemicals. We just, they're brand new. Like, our, we've changed so much in the last hundred years. You know, our sugar consumption has increased 100 fold than what we were having a hundred years ago. Like, mm -hmm. and you know, people are blaming their genes for not fitting. That just doesn't make much sense in my mind. You know, we gotta understand the environment. If we can create a better environment, that's how we just help our community. We help our community, that's how we help our world. So. There's lots of ways to go about it, of course. You know, like you said, Matthew, the mental aspect is so big. And I'm just working on food, physical aspect, you know? Because right. that's just, it's all just different layers, but that's what I love more than anything. So, you know, tomorrow could be eggs for breakfast. You know, you can go Rocky style. You could have them raw if you wanted. I, I don't like that. I tried it a couple <laughs> times. Like, oh, no, don't need to do that. But eggs are a good source of fuel. They are, it's really good protein. And you have them sauteed mm -hmm. with butter, fantastic. So when you have that kind of fuel, it's gonna sustain you for longer. And that's what we wanna to steer towards with all form of athletic performance is that endurance. And endurance, okay, it's not as shiny as like the flash and the, all that, but that's what we need for those tournaments, for those long matches, for the end of the season. We're all animals of endurance and aerobic potential. Yeah. And if we eat in accordance with that, we just are closer to source than that. So for endurance, we want to increase the protein. That's a fuel source that doesn't spike. And that way, you're in control of your own you know, appetites. Because the carbohydrate spike is literally a huge spike up. Insulin levels increase, then we drop down. And then we're hungry again, so we go right back up. And it's just up and down, up and down, up and down and it leads to a lot of stress. So what do you do for breakfast? How can you skip? How do you not? I don't know. I skip it. I sometimes. actually just put that, that pull out. <laughs> nice work, Matthew. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, now the, the millennials just call that intermittent fasting, so that's okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah. honestly, breakfast, if you're gonna skip a meal, that would be the one to skip. Because any breakfast is really just the time you break your fast. And, you know, that's it. You, all night, you have no food. 
And then sometimes you can wake up, kind of get your blood going a little bit, get a little movement. That's the best time to move. Get your metabolism ready for the day. Exercise and water is my thing in the morning. Okay. Hydrate. First thing, just get a big glass of water. It's yeah. amazing what that does. You know, we talked about that salt, but water is actually one more important than the salt. So, <laughs> you wouldn't recommend having, you know, a cup of coffee as your breakfast. Oh, you know what? You could put a lot of butter in it. That got really popular recently. <laughs> <laughs> yes, coffee is delicious. I know, but just you want to counter it, Ashu, with a bit of water. You know? Mm-hmm. You got to have a coffee cup with your water cup. That's yeah. a balance point. You know, it's all about finding that middle path, I think. Because I don't want to go live in some food monastery where I never have any of these things, but I just want to fill myself up with things that are going to be well. So you can still have coffee. I would put some butter in it though. You got to try it at least. Blend it with butter. Oh, it's like a milkshake. <laughs> it's seriously like a coffee milkshake. And what is that full of though? It's full of fat, full of vitamin. It's good of full of fat. And when we eat fat, we actually have two different types of metabolism. We have glucose-based metabolism and we have something called fat metabolism. And we do better with fat metabolism long term because glucose is the one that's the fuel that's the sugars that's the everything easy to find um that just sets us up to eat more and more and more and powers that be want us to eat more because that means more profit for them right so yeah i'm gonna have coffee for breakfast don't you worry but i'll have it with a glass of water so yeah someone's asking a question actually uh so they want to know so you don't th- subscribe to the idea that breakfast is the most important meal of the day? I do not, no. But what is the, the most important? Good question. All right, here's what, let me reframe that. Because the most important meal of the day is the one where you break your fast, but I just have that at lunch. My lunch is my breakfast, because that's when I have my first meal of the day. And I want to have protein in that meal. That's the most important thing. You got to have protein in every meal. All right, that's going to be good for your brain, keeping your head happy. That's huge, yeah? And it's going to be good for your energy because it's more stable than having Oreo cookies, you know? Because I know once I start those Oreo cookies, I cannot stop. And I just keep going with the Oreos until they're gone. It's the same thing with ice cream. It's like, how is this even around me? I can't, like, don't bring that home. Don't bring that home, right? It's a trap. So you want to fill up on protein, and that will get rid of your cravings. And that's a win. So, yeah, protein is the name of the game. You know, that's what Dr. Ted name is work and that P-T-O-E-R calculator. Kind of fun to check it out. You know, it gives you a nice visual about steering towards the green. And that's just good basic protein and steering away from the, the refined carbohydrates and sugars. Yeah. You know, kind of silly, but I think food's already fine. It doesn't need to be refined. Mm-hmm. But that's just my two cent joke for the day. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at it and I'm looking at the chart with the protein on the green side and then like your carbs and fat on the red side. And I was thinking in my head because, you know, I'm Indian and a lot of Indian food is very like that oil and milk based. Um, and it might be the same for a lot of ethnic dishes or people mm-hmm. who eat mostly ethnic food at home. So how do you avoid those kinds of foods if you want a high protein diet? All right, well you just, what is also very popular in India is ghee, right? Yes. That is like so popular all over the planet. That's what we need to fill up on instead of the cheap oil. Because those oils are like, well they're hydrogenated and it's a very chemical process. And you know, to extract oils from seeds instead of like olive has been around for a long time, olive oil, Good enough for Jesus, good enough for everybody. Like you press the oil, you get, it, you, you get the oil. But when you have like cotton seed and like rape seed, that's what canola oil is. It's something called rape seed. It's like gross. Now, those things are chemically extracted. And they're literally made best probably for your automobile. Like that's what they're good for, no matter what. That's a truism. Those are best for your automobile than they are for you. Okay. Because there's not much nutrition left in that. You know, if we just get to olive oil, things like butter, things that are close to source, that's what nature kind of had us growing up with. 
You know, we, we come from there. And some of this chemical processing is, is just brand new. And it leads to just inflammation. Mm -hmm. So there's always ways around it. You know, I know we all live comes from rich cultures. And that's a beautiful thing. I love Indian food. I do. It's fantastic. And I like, you know, chicken marsala. And what is that? Oh, the, the egg, eggplant bindi marsala. I love that one. <laughs> but we can change it. And we can just have the eggplant. We can just have the chicken. But we can just add the ghee, the butter, and those factors and still go with it. And still make it our own. You know, turmeric is wonderful spice. Yeah. And I want us to have that culture, but I just want it to be what your grandparents had as a culture. Instead of kind of what we're doing with the commercial world now, where we're trying to make it cheap. And, you know, I just don't think life is meant to be too cheap. I, mean, I think it's meant to be quality best we can make it. And for me, that just means food. Yeah. How, how would you kind of achieve that, that high protein diet? Um, on a budget great question all right that's i love that question because all right here's the thing for fat soluble vitamin powerhouse you got butter obviously also sardines are like so cheap it's a meal substitute and totally tangible yeah you get a can of sardines you cut up some cucumber or some pickle and you throw it a mayonnaise that's like one of my favorite little salads right there and so what are you getting you're getting fresh food a little bit you know you need some fresh food and then we got some fish and then that's when eggs are cheap yeah you know and if you get meat meat's the most expensive part it just is especially right now with this whole like meat shortages and all that scare yeah. and it's like what do you do i hear it it's tough um but you can find good things like online and you can get you know you can go to your butcher actually mm -hmm. if you find a butcher close by i recommend you get to know your butcher it's just a good thing to have because, you know, they love what they do. And people love what they do, that's a win. So yeah. you can get the, the fat trimming from the butcher, right? Just the, the suet, the, the leftover fat, they, they don't even sell it. But that stuff is chock full of quality vitamin. Now, again, why do you need all this stuff? Why do you need vitamin E? All right, vitamin E is my, actually my favorite. You need it to build all your hormones in your body. It's a hormone precursor. Okay. You need it in your hypothalamus. That's a part of your brain where you connect with the world around you. You need it to make all your sex steroids. You can't make hormones unless you have vitamin E. So butter looks better now, doesn't it? So that's it. And then vitamin K, that's also in butter. It's in all leafy greens. You know, you're getting it in your parsley. You're getting it in your, your you know, your, everything green has vitamin K, has vitamin E. And that's what we want to stick to, yeah? is like things that you can recognize as ingredients in food. Like potatoes are cheap, but at least they're real starches instead of like, you know, cornflakes. Yeah. And I know, I, 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 I admit, my parents didn't buy many like sweet Cheerios, right? They did, but we have to split them half and half, you know, half honey nut, half regular. Mm -hmm. And I'd go to my friend's house, man. Oh, he had a whole closet full of sweets. And I was just like, oh, I just, first thing, I just get toasted fruit, fruit lips, all the things. And I just mix them all together, and I would just smash that bowls and bowls of cereal. Yeah. Why? Because it's like, it's addictive in your brain. It is. And it's what I couldn't have. But, like, it's tough, boys, girls. It's like, it's, just, it's tough to build your life like that. Because that's just a never-ending hamster wheel. And if we're not in control of what we eat, how much control do we even have in life, you know? Because then we're just on our whim, on our whim, on our whim, on our whim, and we're all over the place. Mm -hmm. So on a budget is tough. It's real. I get it. Um, but you can get ground beef. Honestly, it's cheap. You put butter on top, and that's a good meal, just a ground beef. And then the next meal, I'll have some salad. And salad's a little bit more expensive too, but an ounce of prevention in this kind of work just does dividends for long term. Because I want to steer away from those statistics. You know, I just, I need to, um, yeah. you know, those statistics scare the heck out of me. They just do, you know, one in five men, one in three with arthritis. It's like, that's all scary stuff. Yeah. But we can make a change now because there's, there's no miracle cure for those degenerative diseases. It's just about making a direction, putting your rudder down and going in the direction you want to go for your life. So you can do it. It's not too hard, but it does take a little bit more diligence and a little bit more planning.
Yeah. You know, onion, onions are cheap. I love them. Onions are one of my favorites. But, you know, it's like you just want to th stick with food, just food. And if it's advertised, if you can't pronounce the name of it, it's junk. <laughs> Yeah, I also had a like a follow up question because, again, all these proteins and greens and things, aside from like salads, you have to really like take time and cook these things. And, you know, for a high schooler who's like going to school and working and has practice and everything, it's easier to grab that like bag of chips and run out the door, right? So yeah. what do you recommend in terms of like a fast or like easy snack that they can have, but is also giving them that protein boost that they need. All right, now here's a hard one, okay? Because that's a total valid question. And honestly, I would just say, hold off. I'd literally say, take a fast, you know? Take a break. And like, if they're gonna, if you're that hungry, you're really not that hungry. You're just bored, mostly. You know, and it's like, just hold off on it and get a big glass of water and fill your tummy up that way. And then when you got some time and you got a little space, like we don't need to eat three meals a day. There's no way we eat three meals a day. Like, can you imagine in our past, we just have that opportunity? Like, oh, I'm going to have my salad. I'm going to have my fruit. I'm going to have a burger. And then I'm going to do it all again in two hours time. Like, there's no reality where that's reality. <laughs> it's definitely a, a privilege of, of access. Exactly. Uh, like, look at all the food we have. We have to set up a schedule to, to eat it all or it, it, it'll spoil. And, you know, we have the privilege to get more, of course, but we, we have to set up a schedule in order to feed our, our opulence and feed our, our overabundance. Um, but as, as animals, it's not really necessary. Yeah, Matthew, that's, that's spot on. Honest, it's, that's it. Because there's the cool things about longevity studies. And one of the best across the board science I've found for longevity is caloric restriction. And that's not very fun to hear, I know, because it's a social thing to eat, and I love it. But, you know, if we have a little bit less, then that's a good stress for our system. Because really, you'll have more energy. Like, when we digest a burrito, we switch phases, and all of our blood flow and our whole body goes to our belly, and it goes to our rest and digest nerve system, and that's all of our organs. And that's a very good thing. But, like, if we digest a burrito and then try to play soccer – we're going a foot in each direction, you know, all of our blood flows go into our digestion while we're trying to run around and make team. Like that's not a good thing. You want to go into the soccer game a little bit hungry. I'm okay with that. Just a little bit hungry. Yeah. Because yeah. then you can just push through work hard, 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 and then fuel afterwards. It's like, we kind of want to recreate that as best we can, you know, yeah. you may be hungry, but the chips aren't going to serve you. There's not, but like you get some nuts, right? Raw nuts, if you can, that's like a great snack. Chock full of goodies. Mm -hmm. Good fats, some protein, good vitamin content, and mineral. So raw nuts are a good thing on a budget, too, because you can get some peanuts and get almonds, and they can just have those, and they keep well. No yeah. flat seeds, you know? Yeah. I have, I have two follow-up questions. One is, is based on, on ice sheet, because I know that a lot of our high school players, um, the, the school lunch that, that is – on offer is not typically the best. So if they don't kind of break their fast in the morning, they get to lunch mm -hmm. and they, they, there's this food that's not really gonna be helping them because of the, the high chemicals, depending on, you know, which which food they're, they're given. Um, and then after that, they're going straight into after school activities and straight into to training after that. So yeah. where, where in that kind of schedule does the, does it make sense to kind of fuel up? Yeah, that's a great question, Matthew. And that's a very real question. Very real question. So, you know, fresh fruit is always a good option. It is. You, know, you can find that anywhere. Mm -hmm. And you get a banana, you get some apples, that's going to be a nice bit. And that's close to source. It's got lots of fiber. It breaks down slower than a big glass of Sunny D. So fresh fruit is always a win option. You know, I don't expect you to chew on celery all day long. That's not... But like, if we can get raw nuts, fresh fruit, then that, and then we got to get some protein in there. I know that the sardines are not fun. They don't seem appetizing, um, but they're super cheap and effective. They just are. And that's like a powerhouse of what we're talking about with fat soluble vitamin. Yeah. 
And, you know, if you're, you're going to just navigate that water, you know, because it doesn't have to be absolutes. You know, you're still going to live your life. You're, you know, these young boys and gals, like, they're in this genetic potential of awesome right now. That's the thing about young kids. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> and then you'll just go for as long as you can. And then like, okay, now I'll shape up. And I know that's how it is. That's how it was for me at that age. I would just smash whatever food I wanted. And you can do that, but it just, it costs you at some point in your life to do that. So we're just trying to prime the pump with some ideas you can apply. Maybe you only apply one of them. Maybe you just do the salty water thing. Honestly, if I was going to do any, I'd go for that and butter. If that's what you're going to take home from this whole talk, you know, simplified things you can apply today. You know, you don't have to do all this. Like you're still going to live a fruitful, long, brilliant life doing what you're doing. But you know, these are just potential options that you can step towards. And you know, I don't want you to be afraid of food, but I just want you to build your appetite towards salt and towards butter and towards getting some meat. You know, it's, it's just amazing how simple that can be, but how effective that is for our whole body chemistry. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's, it's just towards the direction. And a, a similar question to that, um, you talk about eating post-match a lot, but at what point before the match should they be fueling up for kind of optimal play? So that they're not digesting during the match, but they're... Great question, Matthew. Great question. So a good rule of thumb is two hours before a match, have a bite to eat two hours before, you know, that's, it gives you ample time. That's before you start warming up too. Because we talked about that, that allocation, like if, when we eat all the blood flow changes, it goes away from our peripheral muscles and goes to our belly. And we want it to do that. That's, that's our break system. That's our parasympathetic system. We call that rest and digest. We need that. We need that. We also need our fight or flight system. Now, what system do you want to be in when you're in a match? You want to be fight or flight. You want to be go. You want to be go, 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 blood flow to the muscles. Because that's where you can get your most activity. So when you're hungry, two hours before you start warming up, eat. If you need to get something, you know, you can just go for something quick, like a bit of fruit before is an option. That's going to be a little glucose. It's going to be a little boost up. And you can do a little boost. You can do a little sugar, but it's just not a lifestyle we want to go with, right? You have a little sugar, a little bit of sugar from fruit before match, you're going to do just fine if you're hungry. That's why I made orange slices so popular, right? <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's okay. It works. But we're just talking about, you know, long term. Right. Keep on eating your butter. Honestly, you can have a stick of butter for breakfast. Eat your coffee. Try it. Not a whole stick. <laughs> Don't start there. But you can, honestly. It's a caloric density. It's going to burn you for like eight to 10 hours wow. having one stick of butter. That sounds horrific. I know, but that's, a, that's an elite physiology. If you want to go that direction, you can, but it seems a little lonely sometimes because well, none of your friends are doing it and it's like, but it's tough. You just make choices and you just do what you want to do with life. And that's it. Yeah. I think that's a, a fantastic point because you know, a lot of, say that you you follow this diet and you're eating a stick of butter every day but then none of your friends are doing it none of your friends are playing professional football either there you go and it, it becomes what lane do you want to follow and and then it gets gets into the mental thing again and the the decisions that we're looking to make that's just it you know it's like we got to make some sacrifice at some level you know i think we got to choose and just Stride in the direction of what we know to be true. Yeah. And, you know, it's not, you know, fitting in is a cool thing. I get it. I know that age, big time important, but, you know, you just, you go through little windows, you go through little phases. And sometimes it's like the most important one for you and the ones you love is actually like building your own epicenter. You know, as that starts to build and get a nice foundation, like you change, your frequency changes, your resonance, everything about you changes. And, you know, that's a cool, powerful thing to just like hone that because it starts with you and then that builds outward. And, you know, shoot, I still have pizza with my cousins and my brother sometimes, you know, 
but it's just not how I feed myself, right? If I'm out in a social thing, I can just do that for a bit, but then I go back to my life. And you kind of got a little balance point that you kind of hone and figure out. You know, I like to stay, I like Jedi, I like the Star Wars, right? And only the Sith deal in absolutes, right? So it's okay to have a little balance point to find that. And everyone's going to be balancing a little bit different. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I did have a question about, uh, this is mostly for uh, female athletes. Mm -hmm. I know we have a couple of female players. Um, and I know that as a woman, I struggle a little bit with like anemia and fatigue, especially when it comes to playing sports. Um, so what would you recommend I should be adding to my diet or other female players should be adding to their diets to deal with that like iron deficiency or anemia? Great question. Actually, this like you just wonderful. All right. So here's what there's a great thing that cultures have been doing for about thousands of years. It actually got popularized in Roman times and it was beets, beet frescas. Now beet frescas were utilized as a way to increase it performance. Now, it's got a downstream effect of something called nitric oxide, which is a great booster. And beets have a ton of iron, which makes it fantastic. But they got popularized because, well, um, it's good for athletic performance. And you can make beet tonics, actually. It's really simple. You go to Trader Joe's and you get a bag of beets, two of them, and that will cost you like $5. And you get it in a big jar, like a half gallon. And you put in one tablespoon of salt, another win. And you let that sit for three days and it will be bubbly. It will be a beet tonic. It will be purple, 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 just like, you know, really bright. And you just sip that before a game. That will get you a little bit of carbohydrate, a little bit of iron. It will get you a lot of nitric oxide, which is a vasodilator. And you'll feel that's like the Gatorade plus, to be honest. It works really well for just like body, especially with that iron content, because the beets have a lot of iron. And that's a cheap, easy, awesome way to make a beet kvass. Kvass is called K-V-A-S-S. And I would totally recommend that for any athlete. At least try it. It'll make your teeth funny, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> just brush my teeth after. There you go. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but also, yeah, just to energize, um, we want to, you want to just stick with the protein. You do. I know it sounds boring i wish i had something more exciting to say but if we just if we have a fire a furnace that's burning and we just keep feeding kindling the quick carbohydrates again and again and again and again you know it's just tough to sustain any bit of endurance it's just very difficult it's hard so if we get more protein in our life and that can be eggs that can be meat that can be everything you know right um you'll have better energy with that kvass as well so a two-prong answer there. Okay. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Matthew, do we want to open it up to the audience for questions? Okay. Let's open up the, the Q&A. Cool. Yeah. You guys have questions? Put them in the Q&A chat. We should have set that up before. Any questions right now? Oh, there we go. Two questions. All right. From Eddie. He's asking hey, Eddie. Are cashews considered healthy? And what are foods that could speed up metabolism or burn fat faster? Great question. Cashews are considered healthy. They are a rich quality food. They do have a lot of fat content as well. And that's going to sustain your energy. Now, metabolism is great to work with food, but also we want to work metabolism more with our activity, Eddie. And that means when you wake up in the morning, you're going to want to get your motion started. That means you start moving, you get a big glass of water, and you just get some motion going in your life. That can be push-ups, that can be sit-ups, that can be running. But you want to get your metabolism primed right when you wake up. And that's going to get your metabolism burning throughout the whole day and onward. It's a subtle little hack but it works really well. Now, foods that burn metabolism, you'll find a lot of popularity with stimulants. But, you know, 
honestly, Eddie, those will just make you tireder faster. So they work, but they just like, you know, we just want to get your metabolism going with activity more so than food stimulations. So yeah, there we go. Does that kind of answer? Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Uh, another one from Alex. Uh, inflammation seems to be the hot topic these days. Is that something we should be concerned about? And if so, what foods help prevent it? Great question, Alex. So inflammation is a modern woe. Uh, we do have a lot of things that cause that. Um, so that's why we love talking about omega-3 fatty acid. That tends to be an inflammation reduction fat. And that's where we get all that in fish, which is very beneficial for humans. We need that fatty acid omega-3. Um, it's also, that's a precursor for our regeneration system of something called endocannabinoid. The endocannabinoid system has been recently popularized by all this marijuana rubs and all this stuff, but really we can just eat omega-3 fatty acid and that helps our own system build our endocannabinoid precursors. So that's how we get inflammation reduction at a systemic level is omega-3 fatty acid. And that's again why I'm talking about sardines, Eddie. I know it's no fun, but Alex, excuse me. Um, but yeah, omega-3 fatty acid is a great thing to reduce inflammation. Now, another thing we got to kind of steer away from is inflammation causing foods. And, you know, those are usually the, all those things were like chips, sodas, breads, things that we're just, we eat too much of for too long and they just don't fuel us as well as we could. So we want to steer towards anti-inflammation foods like fatty acids from fish, protein from beef, lamb, chicken, goat, if you're feeling adventurous. But all those things are, they, they cause no inflammation, Alex. And that's a good thing because, you know, less inflammation means less degeneration. Would you recommend getting all of your uh, omega-3s from fish, like holistically from fish, or are there other things that have omega-3s, or should players kind of introduce um, supplements? Great question, Matthew. Um, yes, so here's the thing. Uh, made by nature is best, obviously, but I'm gonna tell you a little story about like the, Poly the, Polyne the Polynesian, Polynesian cold. Would, they would they had they live in this fruitopia they had all this delicious food coconuts everything and they sustained themselves very well but they would also send out the young men to go hunt sharks they wouldn't eat the shark though they would not eat the shark the shark is probably really gross but they wouldn't eat it but they would harvest the liver and they would put the liver in the stomach let it ferment for two weeks and then they'd eat the oil gross you're not going to go out and do that anybody i get it but cod liver oil has the same benefit of that process. So there are some good supplements out there. My favorite is something called Green Pastures, cod liver oil. Uh, it's just made by nature, really close to source. Um, but you can get a lot of food from fish, honestly. You get one can of sardines a day, you're doing light years better than everyone around you. Right. You know, a can of tuna fish also has a good thing, of omega-3 fatty acid and great protein. Mm -hmm. So you can do well just doing what you're doing. But supplements do serve a purpose. It's just sometimes they're a little refined and mm -hmm. you know, they just are, they kind of, sometimes they'll take out all the vitamins and they'll put them back in, in a refined substance. And you know, vitamins all work together like a symphony, especially the fat soluble vitamins. Uh, there's active components, but also it's like, if they're all different tones, and that's a bit poetical, but it's like trying to play Mozart with a cowbell. You know, if you only have one type, like alpha tocopherol, that's the cowbell. But you have all these different tones you need to get. Like there's 13 different tocopherols. And vitamin A, vitamin D, those are, you know, made by nature. Let's try to get them from nature first. That's all. What's the, 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 the difference in a broken? What was that, Matthew? What's the difference in absorption? So like um, a, a man-made vitamin versus a natural vitamin. Is there a difference between which ones absorb better or? Great question. So there's a, yes, there's a thing that happens with all chemicals. Um, it's about how light hits, it's called stoichiometry. It's an organic chemistry principle. And it's actually Linus Pauling 
who popularized vitamin C, who came up with this understanding of something called chilarity. And chiral molecules will either rotate light to the right or to the left. And when you make chemicals in a laboratory, you get a 50-50 split. Now, when nature just happens to live their life in natural flow, most proteins are to the left and their shape and how they polarize light. It sounds really weird, but just, you know, what was that song? Yeah, pass the Ducci on the left hand side. I don't know if that's true or not, but left hand side is better shape and that's made by nature. So when we make things in a lab, we always get a 50-50 split usually. Now they're doing cool things now where you can get just left-handed shaped stuff and they're better absorbed. Um, yeah, but nature just made it better, honestly. And we, we've never made a food ever. We've never made a food that reproduces itself. Right. And when we try to take apart nature and say, this is the only thing we need, I think we miss a lot of the beauty there. Like, big time. Because, yeah, it's just, we, when you eat natural food, you eat, you're getting what you know about, and you're getting what you don't know about yet either. And that's the thing about, you know, like vitamin E with that alpha tocopherol, that's the popularized one. But, you know, to date, there are 13 different tocopherols that are benefit. And there's eight different tocopherotrines. So why are we just getting one of them isolated? You know, that's going to be, a, a, that's a cowbell. And I want the whole symphony. I want it all. So we do better when things are made by nature because it's just more attuned to us because we're a product of nature. And yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> Sometimes these are tough fellas, I know, and gals. It's just like, you, we just do our best, you know? We just do our best. Um, I do have one more question. Uh, speaking of taking food from nature, what is your opinion on like those impossible meats and beyond meats, those lab grown types of food? Um, yeah. Like the same in terms of nutritional value? Are they different? Well, here's what, if you look at the product list on ingredients in those impossible burgers, it's, it's a whole list of ingredients. And you know, where do those ingredients come from? You know, how close to nature are those ingredients? You know, or is it, is xanthan gum part of nature? I don't know. Is that just a chemical that is then put together with a different chemical, with a different chemical? You know, I think we're trying to create something that the ruminant digestive belly of animals and cattle have been doing for forever, for thousands of years. And we're trying to make something out of pieces. And that's a slippery slope, I think. I think it is. I think it's just... I don't, I don't want to play that role. I don't want to be the one that determines this is all you need. This is what you don't need because I don't like being wrong. And you know, that is a thing. So there's impossible burgers. They're not very cheap. One thing. And they're, well, they're chock full of estrogens. There's like, there's so many estrogens in those foods and I want to make my own hormones. I don't want to have them fed to me <laughs> personally. So I think steer clear of that stuff. Yeah, it's just tough to try and be like ethical while still consuming meat, especially in this country. Mm. That's, yeah. that's a valid thing. I get you on that. It's just, there's a lot of junk meat out there. There is, there's a lot of junk stuff, I know. And it's tough to see that. But, you know, a, a different frame of reference, different perspective shift we can hold is like, you know, I, I know it's not financially available for everybody, but you try to support something you like. You know, there's some great people out there doing regenerative farming. You know, that's a carbon positive. That's a great thing for our world. And if we can support that just a little bit, you know, that's going to trend our decisions about like what we vote on every day with our food choices. And the more we support real food, the more we just get back to a natural rhythm of things. And, you know, cattle, yeah, it's tough. I know they're cute. They're awesome. I love my dog. Of course, never, but like, Ruminant belly animals, you know, that's what I think there's some bit of a, a purpose for all things. And, you know, taking care of an animal and being a good husband to that, you know, and then caring for it, nurturing it, and then like getting the fat of the land. You know, I think that's a beautiful process that's been pretty tried and true. And, you know, if we shift all the way towards veganism and the monoculture, you know, agriculture, 
you know, that, that kills a lot of young animals and rodents and all these other factors. And they just get sprayed and they're, you know, it's just tough on the soil. And it's just, it's more LA lifestyle. And it seems all shiny and pretty, but like ultimately I think it's more destructive for our land and for our topsoil and for, you know, things that we know to be true instead of trying to make a new truth. Because, you know, we've never had access to the kind of fresh fruits and vegetables like we do now. And, you know, it, that would never be sustainable. You know, we always have fermented goods and like kimchi and sauerkraut that kept the freshness throughout the years. Or not years, but you know what I mean? And so we just, it's difficult to just have access to whole foods at all time. And that like, you, you can go get anything you want. And that's like, we're surrounded by plenty. We don't even know what to eat anymore. And, you know, the ethical things are tough and you have to make that decision for yourself. But I would recommend Dr. Natasha McCampbell McBride for a cool resource about, you know, regenerative farming or Michael Pollan, he does great work. Also Joel Salatan, he's like my favorite. And he's a grass farmer. That's what he calls himself, a grass farmer. Because when you start with the grass, everything else builds from there. And that's like when you play soccer and you start with the fundamentals and everything else builds from there. And you know, that's what it's all about for me. So start simple. Yeah. Uh, do we want to do one last question? Because Eddie's got a last question. Yeah, let's do let's do one one more question and then we'll uh, sign off. All right. All right. So he wants to know, um, is it good to go to sleep right after you eat? How does that affect the body? Great question, Eddie. So when you sleep, well, that's, here you go, a little correlate here. That's what sumo wrestlers do every day. They eat a huge meal and then they go right to sleep. So then all that gets turned into fat. So honestly, after you eat a big meal, you should probably walk a little bit, Eddie. You know, if you have a late dinner, you just go for, I don't know, late walks are kind of tricky, but you want to move a little bit. You don't want to go right to sleep because that just shifts your metabolism into caloric restriction instead of utilizing. So when you eat and then go right to sleep, you're actually telling your brain, I want to get bigger. And that's, you know, it's not my goal. Maybe you're a sumo wrestler. I don't know, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Matthew, Ashu, thank you. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, DC Rain, you. I wish you the best. It's been super, this has been great. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Uh, my email is fund, F-U-N-D, the care at gmail.com. So look forward to questions, comments. Um, if you're making delicious food, you can post it to my Instagram there too at fund the care. And you know, we'll just have fun with this and build a little community we want. And I hope it's going to be good soccer players living good lives. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. It's fantastic. Before right. we sign off, a couple of shout outs to our sponsors, um, BNG Customs with our, oh, perfect. BNG Customs with our apparel for our kits and our training kits. Uh, and our spirit wear, one step beyond fitness, taking care of our players, uh, conditioning and leveling the playing field, hooking us up with uh, equipment for our players to play. Sounds good. Uh, next week, uh, we have our rain talk with Nate Kish. Um, he's going to be talking about college recruitment and how to make the transition from high school to college as easy as possible. Nice. Sounds great. I'll be listening in. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, it's been fun. I got to actually get back to work. I got a couple more patients today. <laughs> so, Matthew, Ashley, thank you. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Yeah, thank you. All right. Bye for now. See you. Bye.